Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and uh, welcome to this uh, seventh webinar uh, organized uh, within uh, the Accelerate project. Uh, and this is uh, focused on advanced membranes for CO2 capture. So, uh, before starting with uh, two presentations, two technical presentations, uh, I have just a couple of uh, recommendations. Uh, so all the participants uh, must uh, switch off their microphones and cameras during the, the webinar. And uh, there is a question and answer time at, at the end of uh, the technical presentations. So um, it, of course, uh, questions are more than welcome. And uh, please type them in the, in the um, questions panel. Uh, and uh, I'll read the questions to the speakers after their presentations. So you will have a, a response to your questions. Uh, so just a couple of words to introduce Excel, which is a, an international network. Uh, it's the European Carbon Dioxide Capture and Storage Laboratory Infrastructure that uh, uh, shares with uh, all the scientific communities more than uh, 80 uh, research facilities distributed in uh, into five European countries. So uh, France, Italy, UK, the Netherlands, and Norway that hosts the, the operation center. And uh, uh, um, in particular, this uh, uh this uh, cycle of webinar uh is organized in the framework of the accelerate project uh which aims to strengthen the the, the research facility uh the the, the the excel consortium uh with particular reference uh to the uh improvement of the uh facilities and uh, uh, to the extension of uh, uh, the, the activities towards CO2 utilization. Uh, so from CCS to CCUS. And uh, in particular, one of the tasks of the project, which is funded uh, by the European Union, is uh, uh, the capacity building program. Uh, which includes a series of, uh, of webinar, included this, uh, including this one, uh, the organization of a specific uh, workshop uh, within uh, popular summer schools, and uh, uh, several tailored training courses uh, to promote the access to the, to the facilities. So what about this uh, webinar? We have two technical um, presentations. Uh, so the first one, um, uh, the, the first speaker is uh, Professor Li Wang Deng. Uh, she's a professor uh, in the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University uh, at the Norwegian University of uh, Science and Technology and TNU. Um, she's the head of the Membrane Research Group with uh, more than 20 years of experience in uh, in membrane research. The second speaker is uh, Matteo Minelli, who is the uh, Associate Professor of uh, Chemical Engineering Fundamentals at the University of Bologna in Italy. Uh, he's an expert on uh, membrane science with a particular focus on the development and the characterization of uh, uh, membranes for uh, gas separation in particular. Uh, CO2 from nitrogen or from uh, hydrogen separation. So, uh, is
Roberto, shall we start? Yes, did you, do you hear me? Uh, Alberto, we have lost for a while. So William, please uh, go ahead with the U1. Okay, I assign them the presenter role. Is that my turn? Yeah, please go on. Okay, sorry, I, I didn't uh, catch the last uh, introduction part. Yeah, and um, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to present some of our work uh, related with uh, CO2 capture memories. And the title I'm going to present today is uh, Lava Materials Enhanced Memories for CO2 Capture, Journey from lab to industry. So in the other list I put, except for me, the second one, uh, Saravana Yana Kiran. He was my student, PhD student and graduated last year. And the third one is uh, a researcher, a senior researcher in our group. The reason they are here because the second author was the one developed the memory I'm going to present today. And the third author is going to make this memory from uh, map scale to industrial scale to uh, upscale the memory. And so from the pictures, you can see how beautiful the terrain is. So uh, this is in the summer time and this is in the winter. We can see the northern night. So if you have opportunity to visit us, you can see we have opportunity also here, which is the XI facilities. XI facilities we in our group has been many years. So uh, if you see what we do in our group, we have we are the member research group at NTU. We also have the lamb called the Memfo, member for Shklen in Norwegian. So with this uh, group, we have um, about 30 years uh, background experience in uh, memory materials. That's uh, most of our work is doing to find the best materials. Then we also fabricate materials to test in the lab scale and then also to make it in the modules and then we test in the pilot scale in industry and then we also do process simulation design and if possible we have in the industry collaboration go to demonstration type uh, stage so the main job i listed here is uh, to do uh, with co2 capture so we see most of the, our, uh, our activities is co2 separation co2 removal from natural gas, flow gas, biogas, syngas, and the applications listed here. So because of the different mixtures, we have like CO2 capture, natural gas sweetening, biogas operating, and different applications. We also do memory contactors and the memory process for subsea separation, also including CO2 removal and process design and simulation. And 
because of this uh, research activities, we have a very advanced uh, memory lab, which is now also part of Excel. So you see this is some um, facilities are listed here. If you see from the list, you see what we have available in our lab. We call it uh, in Excel is called the Mem Member Fab Lab. It's uh, all the instruments or uh, facilities for memory fabrication. Then we also have uh, facilities for memory characterization or permission tests. So you can see from the list. And because of this, you can get access. If you find something interesting, you can get access from the Excel website. Then we can contact uh, and find out a good time if you can visit us. So that is today's presentation. I just want to have a very brief introduction of what we have done. Take one example, how we develop a memory from uh, nap scale to industrial scale. So to start with, we all know CO2 so capture. I don't want to repeat how important it is. And from the, the source of CO2, we have uh, really different sources. And we focus on this stationary from industry, from power plant, and from uh, different uh, a process, like uh, also including biogas uh, from agriculture. And we also recently started to look into transport, uh, CO2 from transport uh, section. And for large scale, right, uh, but now the commercial or material technology mostly like absorption and sometimes also adsorption in some applications. Memory separation is more like an emerging technology. For CO2 separation, there was not existing commercial technology available yet. But memory separation has some very uh, advantages, which is uh, makes it advantages from uh, absorption, also other conventional process. For example, small footprints, no capital costs. We don't need to add any chemicals and the energy consumption is no. Uh, except for that, one very good advantage we would like to make memory into practice is because memory is more advantageous when it's small or medium size. If you see from the scale, it's um, um, not a, it's only a quantitative cost comparison. So you, you can see if you pass a certain size, absorption is more advantageous. So you have a lower cost economically. But if the size is small or medium, memory is more advantageous even economically because as we said, from environmental or energy cost point of view or from the size point of view, memory is already better than absorption, but economically it's not. Then if it's in the small or medium size, economically even memory can be more advantageous. So it makes memory have more applications like we talk about in mobile or transport marine time, like shipping, we can take it for like platform CO2 capture or biogas, like small, medium farmer size, and a lot of industrial processes. Recently, we, we have uh, some collaboration with some industry process. For example, the cement industry, we can take CO2 from some process. So then uh, the what we are looking for in find the best memory. Of course, as a material, so the material itself is important. We would like to have the memory have the best selectivity and the highest permeance or permeability. So we would like to have the most permeable memory and the selective memory. However, memory has to be installed in modules because the memory material cannot have the separation by its own. So we have to uh, make it into a module to have to separate the mixture phase and the separated the pure gas phase. So we by doing this, the memory also being protected also can have more packing density. So for the same space, we can have more memory areas for the separation. Except for that, the most important performance for memory, we have permeability, which is the material performance or permeance, 
which is more we use it for like a module performance or for composite memory if we don't only see the material but see the combination of different layers of materials. We also have separation for the selectivity. So then for selectivity, if you look at the material itself, we just say and the permeation of one gas over another, we can have this ideal selectivity. But from the process point of view or from the general chemical engineering point of view, the separation factor is like more universally used. So we also use what's the uh, con concentration in and what's in the purified gas stream, the ratio of them, we can get the separation factor. So this is the more Im important uh, parameter to look into permeates and the separation factor when we develop uh, industrial scale membranes. So what we are looking for in our work in our group is always like we would like to have high performance, high selectivity, high performance, high selectivity, high stability, and also we would like to the memory be um, easy to fabricate, easy to upscale and uh, cheap, and uh, like to uh, uh, have higher durability in the view stream. So a lot, a long list here. But what we look uh, majorly looking for, we have the first three. Even for only three, we can't have all at the, at once. So we have to have some um, trade off between this uh, opportunity, uh, uh, this performance. So we have to sacrifice some properties for other. So then, uh, what membranes look like? For those has not much memory background, we can say uh, memory can can be look like a piece of paper. So you can have to make the separation into two phases, and it also can you can make this like a piece of a flat sheet paper into different shapes. For example, spiral wood to make more uh, surface area per square meter per cubic meter of space, or you can make it to envelopes. So anyway. If with a uh, flat sheet memory, you can have a packing density of this. But our group focus on ho hollow fiber membranes. In this case, you make the memory into like like a, a hollow fibers, like a horse. You can imagine a what horse, but to be a macro scale, you have a, like this size. So you have the separation. For example, mix gas outside, you can collect the pure gas from inside the hose. And then you can, by doing this, you can make different type of modules and the packing density of hollow fiber can be 10 times higher than flat sheet. That's why we look into this because gas separation normally have a, a large amount of uh, flow. Then the memory, if we zoom in into the memory skin, we can find the normally memory has uh, why we much open those structure underneath to reduce the resistance, but we should have a tight or long porous layer for the separation. In our group, we use this layer as the support layer, then we coat additional layer. This layer can have a different material, but we can make this material very thin, still have the selectivity. Then the requirement for this support layer is much less, so we can um, optimize the memory as a whole. So this type of memory is uh, called a composite memory. That's normally what we work in our group. And right now, most of the memories in the world, it's uh, based on a mechanism called solution diffusion, uh, most of the polymeric memories. So in this case, for example, CO2 or other gas anyway, so they're going to dissolve and inside as gas molecules and diffuse through the polymer. So because of this, the polymer materials makes all the per, their separation performance, like their selectivity and the permeability have a, a trade off. So if you find the material has high permeability, normally their selectivity is low because of the mechanism. So to break through this uh, trade off, there are some strategies. In our group, we, we normally take two of the strategies. One is to introduce an uh, additional mechanism called facilitated transport mechanism. So we use polymers with some 
group, functional groups can have a reversible reaction with uh, CO2. So the, because of the uh, additional property, so CO2 can have both high selectivity and the polymers at the same time. Then we also try to put in some lala fibers or lala uh, seeds, 2D, uh, 1D or 2D materials because of this. So the, the lala phase can, in, can make the, the polymer packing differently and also sometimes can create more CO2 phenic phase. So in this way, we can uh, combine this uh, uh, approaches to make the membrane more selective and permeable. So the, this is the starting point. We're trying to look into different polymer phase. And then we also introduce some CO2 phenic molecules as the mobile carrier phase. So this mobile carriers can take additional CO2 in. Then we also have a lot of different uh, lalo fillers, which is many in our group. We work on 1D, like fibers, or 2D, like seeds into membrane. And then we put this which research ideas. We look into different polymers, different lalofillers, and then we combine all these materials to do material optimization. Then we find some optimized materials. We start to coat it into flat sheet thin composite membranes. If we find some good ones, we make it in the hollow fiber membranes. Then we take these membranes into industry for validation in a VO stream. And then we, if we find it can handle the situation, like durability and stability is good enough and the performance is good, then we start to do feasibility study and do, do pilot scale and the demonstration scale. So right now we are climbing this slope up with industry, together with industry. So this is one example of what we have done. This memory we call it um, facility chance memory. And with mobile carriers. So in in this one, we have a, a porous support and on the top we coat a layer. Of course, this layer can be like, like 200 nanometers. It's a very thin layer. In this layer, we have the polymer matrix, which have amino groups, can facilitate transport the CO2 because of the affinity of CO2 with amines. And because of that, um, we know most of the CO2 strains has uh, water vapor inside. And this water vapor will have some reaction, reversible reaction together with the amino groups. And this water is going to accelerate the transport and make that bicarbonate. So the transport of CO2 through become a bicarbonate. So then we can have the transport much quicker. So in this type, because of the, the functional group is fixed, in the backbone of the polymer, so we call it fixed set carriers. Then we also add mobile carriers, which are some um, CO2 phenic organic molecules, can be, for example, ionic liquid amino acid or salts. In these are two examples. So by adding this, they can also introduce the chance of CO2 uh, combined with the mobile carriers. Then in, we also had the, in the middle, we have this. Uh, 2D seeds. This is one example. So we also have 1D material. In this one, we take 2D lalo fillers, for example. Now we put graphene oxide inside as uh, the lalo phase. And in this one, that makes the, the graphene oxide, the reason we choose them is because the graphene oxide has a very high aspect ratio and very high in mechanic strengths, and uh, we can treat them on the surface modifications to make it hydrophenic phenic with also CO2 phenic. And uh, by adding a very, very small amount, but, but now we only put 0.2% weight percent into the membrane. So then because of that, we find the polymer chain packing will be different and then the idea of that can have uh, reorientation of the water channel in, uh, to enhance the water transport. And then we can, on the surface of that, can enhance CO2 solubility and the water retention. And we can also increase the mechanical strength. Of course, this if we 
put uh, graphene oxide like uh, seeds, like like this. It's going to like it's going to block instead of uh, uh, enhance the transport. It's going to block the transport. So what we have done is to we did some physical treatment to make the graphene oxide with pores. So we still have the seeds, but in the seeds we have some pores. So the in existing of this pores reduce the blockage blockage property, but uh, enhance the surface area and enhance the water channel. So this is how we have done um, the concept of that. So we have uh, made some work on the graphene. So we made porous graphene, make the size suitable for making membranes. And we also tried to uh, make the, the membrane with graphene uh, have a very good dispersion and then make the alignment um, possible. So now all the graphene oxide and the surface of the membrane is in parallel. So it's uh, so the the lysis is not going to stand out. It's going to be lying in the same direction of the the membrane. Even the membrane is only two hundred nanometers in thickness. So the lysis is going to be in parallel. And this is when we make flat sheet membrane, we use bar coating. So we have, we apply some force to make this, but we also made it pos possibly make into hollow fiber membrane by deep coating. So in this way, we have to have some smart design to control like the, the graphene oxide is going to be also lying in parallel into this surface. So we obviously succeeded because uh, we, by making hollow fiber membrane, it's normally impossible with this lalo seeds, but we succeeded into making into ultra thin and the selective membrane. So this is how we make it. After make hollow fiber membrane, we make it into modules and the test the modules. So this is the what we have to test the membrane module, we have some uh, watt uh, buffers to make the membrane humidified to simulate the condition with industry. So in industry streams, normally it's uh, saturated with water vapor and the, the common membrane, you have to take away the water. But in this membrane, water vapor is uh, in favor of the separation. So we, to simulate the, the real stream, we have the humidifier here. So the, this is a, a normal hybrid membrane. If you have a little polymer, you add up graphene oxide. Um, common way, if you just use take off not modified graphene oxide, the performance will be decreased. But if you take some modified graphene oxide, for example, porous graphene oxide, so the the permeability will increase and the selectivity will also increase, but not much. Or maybe in this direction, you can see this green one, this direction. And then if you have a functionalized uh, graphene oxide, then people published some data is in this direction. So both the selectivity and the permeability all increased. And then we tested our membrane with, with Test. First, we did to optimize the performance by uh, vary the, the amount of graphene oxide, how much it is. So we find by adding 0.2% graphene oxide, different types of graphene oxide has different performance. You see we add GO only, we had porous GO, or we have modified GO different ways. For example, when we add a little bit of that, we find the selectivity decreased with this percent. It's very bad, of course, we don't want to reduce the selectivity, but the reason of that is because the adding of uh, this uh, LALO uh, seeds is going to uh, have this uh, dispose, uh, twisted of the packing, which makes the loss of selectivity. But the compensation of that makes some of the case, for example, porous graphene, the performance in the permeates increased significantly. And in industry application, permeates is quite important. And then different one, if only GO itself, 
also had a little bit increase. But uh, surprisingly, when we find this uh, PEG modified functionalist geo, the perme permeates decreased. That's because um, the very good compatibility with the with the matrix makes solidified around the poly, poly, uh, graphene, so makes uh, no channel formed for this. So the both selectivity and permeance reduced. So we don't like this one. But surprisingly, if we go further for higher weight percent, one percent, then we we can get uh, ninety selectivity. Of course, the permeance is going to be like only 200. So when we do process simulation, you find that in some of the process, if the selectivity is more uh, higher requirement, then we can take this percent. So for, for this uh, study, we find two memories we would like to go on further. One is the one with the highest permeance, which is porous GO, and another one is the one with the highest um, per selectivity, which is one percent of like PG hybrid geo. So we then we take it for the test, and when we find different geo, we also find the the size of the geo is critical. So we had uh, the, the modified with a different uh, condition. And this is just a sign of the modification condition. So if it's three means the most is the bigger one because that means we use less time for the porous creation. When it's nine, it's three times time we used. So we find that when we use uh, this uh, in uh, between these two, the condition between these two, we we find the the optimal size of the graphene so which is what we finally choose so from here you can see we can use this one we can have around three, uh, 35 selectivity and uh, around 800 gpu by uh, choose the best uh, size porous geo for this case then we also tested this uh, for adding different mobile carriers for example it doesn't seem like uh, some of the mobile carrier may have a lack of inference, but this mobile carrier have uh, a little bit of inference uh, positively. And we also find that in industrial scale, this inference is much, much significant than in the in lab scale. So we finally choose this one to our final industry test. And we also find if we use this to test the fossil to emission separation, because we also want to have the biogas case, we find also a significant change in adding mobile carriers. But the the change, if we say, if we want to save this step, still only adding porous GO is a good performance already. So then we had uh, sent this to industry in a cement company in Italy. In Italy. So there we found, uh, we just dig a hole from the chimney from the cement in company, just dig a hole and use a simple two micrometer filter and then cooling down and sent to the module. And by doing that, we found we found a very high, much higher CO2 permeance combined with the lab scale, which is, for example, this one is almost almost doubled. It's like 1.5 times higher in that. And only by one step, we find the CO2 purity from 10% already increased to 52% and 51.8% in these two membranes. So they are better than in the lab. We find the reason of the performance is better because in the cement company, we get much higher temperature like this one, we have 80, uh, 60 to 90 degree, but in the lab, we only have 25 degree. So that makes our, our performance better in the industrial scale. And then we also found, because in, from, from the industrial scale, uh, we got the flow gas here, and the temperature of uh, the water saturation from the, from the flow gas from the chimney is much higher than 
what we get from the lab because we have to simulate in the lab, but in industry, it's uh, the water is really uh, saturated, especially at a high temperature, and then the, the water amount is much higher than in the lab. So that makes our case look much better in real industry compared to this lab, which is quite uh, uh, a surprise. Then we also do, did some uh, stability test, which this one is only the 15 days campaign in the, the industry side. We, we can see the performance uh, have some change, but not for worse, but for better. And then we also did this test. We bring the membrane to industry. And then we, after that, we also bring, brought it to the uh, University of Sheffield in the uh, Edinburgh in the lab to test the impurity test. We find by adding like 100, even 1,000 times of, of the amount of socks and locks in the lab, you can see here, introduce much higher concentration of the socks and locks. Then we find that the performance didn't have any negative influence. So it's really unchanged before and after the introdu introduction of the impurities. So that's a good sign, which means that this membrane can handle that temperature and it can handle the impurities from the flow gas. So because of that, this membrane is uh, interested and uh, in one company called um, Aqualan uh, established the company was actually invest, uh, investors that established this company called Aqualan just to commercialize this uh, our membrane. And then this company called Standardism, they are going to test our membrane in US. So last week they visited us or the whole team. That's what we are doing now. So thank you for your attention. And if you have questions, I'm glad to, to answer you. Thanks, Liwan. Uh, of course, if you have any question, as uh, <clears throat> as mentioned, please type them in the in the question uh, uh, panel. So, <clears throat> the next speaker is uh, Matteo Minelli from the University of Bologna. Please, Matteo. Matteo, you, you are mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. Um, okay, so uh, thanks for the introduction, thanks for the opportunity, and thank you all for uh, for being here. Uh, I'm Matteo Minelli from the University of Bologna, and, uh, and here I would like to to, uh, to briefly illustrate to you the, the Exaleric facility we have uh, at the Department of Chemical Engineering, and to provide you with a sip, actually a couple of sips of what we are doing uh, in, in, in that uh, facility and in the laboratories we have. So for, for what concern carbon capture, uh, by membranes following two different uh, approaches. Um, so in, in very uh, in brief, what we have in the laboratory is uh, a, quite, um, a quite large uh, facility, a quite, quite large collection of instruments for the characterization of membrane, uh, for gas separation, um, for uh, you know, in a wide range of operative conditions, from low pressure to high pressure, low and high temperature, uh, especially uh, starting from sorption apparatuses um, using different uh, different uh, techniques, from uh, gravimetrics or microbalances to to pressure. Uh, driven apparatuses, and also we have the capability to measure the, the uh, mixtures uh, of gases, uh, the sorption of mix of gases in polymers or in polymer-based uh, systems. Um, we also have the capability to measure permeation of gases 
in, in, in polymer and polymeric membranes uh, and for, for what concern pure gases in, in dry condition, uh, but also humid gases, mixed gas, uh, and so on. We also have uh, some instruments equipped to, uh, to understand some peculiar mechanisms to, to in, uh, analyze uh, aspects and problematic um, issues related to membrane separation, uh, as for instance, the ability to inspect uh, swelling uh, plasticization uh, to inspect the interaction polymer and penetrant um, by an infrared technique and, and, and so on. And it's the, the group indeed has main focus on, on the mass transport uh, in, in gas uh, of gases and vapors also in, in polymer systems. Uh, targeting solubility, diffusivity, impermeability in any kind of polymers and, and composites. Um, and, and that is from an experimental point of view, but also from, from a molecular and thermodynamic modeling point of view. Um, membranes and membrane separation processes are the key uh, sector uh, for what concern uh, polymeric membranes in particular for CO2 capture but also for biogas enrichment, biogas upgrading, uh, natural gas sweetening and, and so on. Let me also mention that uh, we are also involved in, in the analysis and, and characterization of barrier materials uh, for packaging application, for instance, but also for CO2 transport. So for the analysis of um, all those facilities and, and polymers, uh, polymeric systems in particular, uh, in the CO2 transport infrastructure. So between, you know, carbon capture and carbon utilization or storage, there is uh, the need of CO2 transport. So I'm not going to spend too much time. The, the previous speaker has also um, uh, spent a few words about that. But let, let me just say that uh, next to the conventional technique like absorption and adsorption uh, for the separation of CO2 from gas streams, membranes are a very interesting opportunity. I'm not going to talk about pros and cons of of the different methods, but let me just highlight that one of the uh, key aspects uh, is the need of the development of new materials with high performances. Um, performances for gas separation membranes uh, and for gas separation polymeric uh, membranes uh, they are then systems, and so the transport relies on a solution diffusion mechanism. And I'm simply highlighting here that we have two different uh, contributions to the flux. This is the moral flux of the species I. We have two different contributions. The first is given as a thermodynamic uh, contribute, given by the diffusivity, and the second one is the um, solubility coefficient that tells us how much the gas is um, soluble in the polymer itself. So the, 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 these two factors, thermodynamic, um, the solubility and kinetic, the, the diffusivity, they both contribute to the, to the overall permeability. Uh, and the other key parameters is the selectivity. So how much one gas is more permeable than the other. Um, so why there is the need for a new material, uh, as also previously highlighted, there is a trade-off between the, the, the productivity, uh, that is basically the permeability of one of the species, versus the separation, separation efficiency, that is the selectivity. So um, we, we, we need basically to find the way uh, forward to go uh, you know, um, towards the state of the art and to, to develop new materials with improved performance. So basically what we need to do is to go northeast in this um, upper bound uh, plot and, and so to find new materials or new uh, systems able to go in that direction. Um, there are actually different strategies that you can, that you can um, 
attempt in this case uh, with this uh, goal. And actually, um, they, they mostly consider the combination of different species and what they are often called the mixed matrix uh, membranes. Uh, so by combining the polymer and, and the neat polymer with, for instance, some molecular sieve objects uh, or um, like zeolites, metal organic framework, 2D materials, uh, nanosilica and, and so on, or with systems with polymer, with other polymer, with some, you know, low molecular weight species, uh, able to interact preferentially with one of the uh, penetrant and with CO2 in particular. This is the case of amines, some polar moieties, ionic liquids, and, and, and so on. So the, the, the idea indeed is that to, uh, to target this uh, sweet spot uh, that is here in, in, uh, in purple in the, in, in, the, in, the, in, in the upper bound uh, plot. And so basically by the incorporation of some molecular sieves so, uh, in the, into, the, uh, into the active layer, what we can expect to obtain is a significant increase in the in the performances and in the selectivity in particular. So going, you know, uh, beyond the state of the art. The other possibility for facilitated transport is to try to establish this uh, mechanism uh, that it's able to boost the permeability of of one uh, of one species and CO2 in particular, uh, without affecting the selectivity at all. So, uh, or even increasing the selectivity without affecting the permeability of the other species. Okay. So let me, uh, as I mentioned before, and as, as anticipated before, just to provide you a sip of the two type of activity we are doing at the University of Bologna. So first, I'm going to talk about the development of geo-based membranes, or graphene oxide-based membranes for gas sieving application. So what we are going to do is to create a nanostructured coating, uh, you know, nanolayers by using 2D materials for, uh, for sieving application, and in particular for purification of hydrogen, that is a pre-combustion carbon capture application, so separation of hydrogen from CO2. The, the, the main idea is to establish, uh, to create a tortuous path through the membrane, um, uh, you know, exploiting 2D objects, and this type of uh, path, it's able to hinder significantly the, the, the transport of big species like CO2 uh, and not that much to that of small molecules like uh, hydrogen, helium or other species. Um, well, this is an ultra thin uh, layer, an ultra thin graphene oxide um, uh, coating that it's deposited, that there is a very thin in the order of few tens of nanometers that is deposited on, on a polymer substrate, typically much thicker, that provides the mechanical resistance. There are different aspects that they are uh, ruling the effect on gas transfer properties, including the, the defect on, on this uh, graphene sheets how you pack these sheets and how big these sheets are, so their aspect ratio. So there are different possibilities for uh, graphene that are available in the market, and we, we looked uh, at the compromise between price and, and quality, and so the choice went to graphene oxide, which is also very interesting for uh, the large sheet size. The presence of holes in, 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 the, uh, in the surface of this nanosheets, and also the presence of surface charges that they are located on, on, on geo uh, nanosheets. That is why, well, because we, the, the membrane is prepared by layer by layer self-assembly, in which basically you, you, you drive the, the, the construction of the coating alternating a polycation layer with an, an, uh, an ionic layer, that is the geo, um, uh, basically exploiting the, the weak electrostatic charges that they are present on, the, on this polyelectrolytes, 
and and so basically you are able to create uh, uh, what, what they are called by layers um, by you know self-assembling uh, fabrication. The the it, it's a simple deep coating uh, strategy that you can use by alternating the polycation and geo coating deposition by uh, rinsing in water in order to remove the excel the excess of uh, of uh, solution and and we typically do that for uh, for about 10 um, for 10 by layers so we deposit 10 by layers and we can do that on on top of many different uh, many different substrates uh, you know from polymer commodities poly emits that they are state of the art uh, for hydrogen separation and other separation uh, on top of uh, inorganic substrates, microporous systems, and, and so on. Um, well, we, we have used to, to, to uh, as a polyelectrolytes, many different uh, charts, uh, weekly charts, uh, polymer, and we use the commercial GEO system by Graphenam. And, and here is what we obtain. This is uh, by imaging uh, ellipsometry. This is a micromapping on how big this each bilayer is. So this is actually the layer uh, of geo, with, which you know uh, there is a certain scattering, but still you can see how big uh, typically is a, a single geo layer, which is in the order of uh, one nanometer or a bit more. And then here it's the one that uses PEI as a pot electrolyte, which is a bit larger. So basically, what you can find in here it's an overall bilayer of uh, less than four nanometers. And this is also confirmed by SEM analysis and uh, and also by F uh, AFM microscopy. So basically, one bilayer is about uh, 3.7 nanometers and we the, the, the membranes we are creating are 10 bilayers. So that, that means less than 40 nanometers. Okay, so if... Um, are this, um, these layers uh, selective or not? Well, they are extremely selective. So uh, if you plot the, the, the permeability of different gases of different size with their molecular kinetic diameter, what you can see is a slope that is dramatically uh, steep. And this, um, this slope is actually uh, significantly larger than any other polymer and, and many other uh, inorganic systems. So the, 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 the sieving effect is very, very important. And, uh, and you can also visualize that in this uh, trade-off uh, curve in which um, basically using many different uh, polycations, PEI of different types, P8A, uh, PAH, PDDA, uh, then you can see that depending on the type of polymer you are using, depending on the characteristics, structure, and also uh, charge, basically you're going to get very different uh, selectivities uh, and, and permeabilities. Here, helium is used instead of uh, hydrogen as a you know, safer surrogate. And, and, and by what, what I want to to make you to the point of attention is to the, the dramatically hard, large selectivity that it is possible to reach in this case. But then you can also play around uh, with the with the different substrates, with the different. Uh, you can also modify the geo for the sake of uh, time. I'm going only to show you how you can basically uh, go in and overcome. The, the, uh, and surprise the upper bound if you use a very thin uh, matrimid layer and you apply this uh, coating on top, very selective coating. So you basically are able to uh, preserve the great selectivity of the coating and, and paying a very uh, a significant, a very small price, let me say, if you start from literature, from uh, matrimid. Um, 
all the emit uh, permeability from here. So you basically decrease a bit the flux of CO2, but the selectivity is dramatically improved or about two orders of magnitude. Okay. And let, let me now switch very briefly the, the, the approach. And now I would like to, to target the case of facilitated transport. So the, the mechanism we want to exploit is the one that has been uh, already introduced by Lily. Previously, we want to uh, have a preferential transport of one of the species, that is CO2, uh, that is transported uh, from one side to the membrane to the other by using uh, carriers that can be fixed or mobile and uh, to, to be in contrast with the conventional and slower solution diffusion mechanism. So uh, the, 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 the idea is to use uh, species and amines in particular that they are able to um, to create, to exploit two, two main mechanisms that they are, the formation of hydrogen carbonate or, the, uh, or, or of carbamate ions that are preferentially transported in CO2 from one side to another, from upstream to downstream side. Okay, so within the NanoMMC project, um, uh, we have explored the numbers of different polymers and different additives um, and in particular, I'm going to provide you an example of the use of uh, polyvinyl amine, a uh, commercial product, lupamine, and using arginine as additive. And these two are combined with the filler, that is the nanocellulose here used to provide, um, well, the use of nanocellulose was to provide a mechanical strength, a certain rigidity and resistance to the, to the membrane itself. Uh, but it is also showing like very interesting properties, as you will see. Indeed, if you st we started the characterization of nanocellulose uh, only, and here is the case of CO2 and methane uh, separation, but that, that it's very analogous for the case of CO2 nitrogen separation. But if, if you increase the uh, relative humidity so, uh, of, uh, of the gas, of the penetrating gas, of CO2, in this case, this is MFC, uh, nanocellulose. If you increase the, the relative humidity, you are able to uh, boost the permeability of CO2 and with no significant changes in, in the permeability of uh, methane. So the selectivity goes up very dramatically. And whenever you reach about 80%, the selectivity is very large. Um, if you add, and so the water is required, there is the need of a significant amount of water around in order to make this membrane to work. Uh, if you can increase, you can use then the, the polyvinyl amine, and if you do that, similar properties they might be reached with the lower relative humidity. And if you increase the relative humidity even further for this uh, green, green curve what you get is a dramatic loss of the properties, okay? That is the same, and it's or even more clear for the case of post-combustion carbon capture, so CO2 nitrogen separation. But, uh, so what we, uh, this led to the modification of the nanocellulose in order to promote the interaction with polyvinylamine, and that is, that was carboxymethylated, uh, and, and the procedure was uh, visualized and identified by IR uh, as spectroscopy. And, and then we use arginine as a mobile carrier, so able to basically carry CO2 molecules from one side to another. And we, we've used, um, you know, we loaded by arginine, NFC, um, NFC uh, systems, uh, with different uh, amounts from 25 to 45 percent, and and here is what you what you can see. Well, this is the water absorption. How much water? Uh, how much is the water uptake uh, in in the uh, carboxymethylated nanocellulose? And in the same loaded by arginine. 
and what you can see in here, it's basically there is no significant difference uh, by the arginine loading. So the, the amount of water that is uh, absorbed is similar. But there is a clear effect on, on the gas separation properties. So here is carboxymethylated non-cellulose. Um, so whenever you go to high humidity, you're going towards you know, high, high permeabilities and high selectivity, but it's only with the presence of arginine that you are able to go to this very interesting and sweet spot, let me say, for membrane separation. And that is by using about 45% of arginine added to nanocellulose. So by wrapping up everything, um, the, the, the focus on the activity at the University of Bologna and the Department of Chemical Engineering is in developing molecular sieving membranes by combining graphene oxide and the fabrication of composite coating with dramatically high selectivity and by using uh, polyamine, uh, nanofibrillated cellulose and mobile carriers uh, to create composite for gas separation in the presence of humidity and to develop and facilitate the transport uh, membranes. With that, I would like to thank all the people that have contributed uh, over these years and I would like to thank you for your attention. I will be glad to take any questions. Thank you, Matteo. Uh... As mentioned, if you have questions, please type them in a, in a question box. Uh, possibly specifying the speaker, uh, the question is, uh, is addressed to. Uh, so in the meantime, we already have a couple of questions, uh, in particular for, uh, for Lee Wan. Uh, so the first question is, uh, what capacity can be expected for a membrane CO2 separation? Sorry, could you repeat? Yes, uh, the question is, uh, what capacity can be expected for membrane CO2 separation? What capacity? Yeah, I, um, I don't know. Uh, so probably, uh, the the question is referred to the to the scale. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, to, to be honest, size. I I as as in the figure it says quantitatively. So I don't have a specific number right now in my mind. But we has we can find from literature some some simulation data we have there. But I don't have it in my mind right now. Sorry about that. Uh, <clears throat> the second question is, uh, can you provide comparison between uh, uh, this membrane against uh, uh, monoethanolamine based uh, absorption? So a comparison between which advantage uh, this uh, membrane can have? Yeah, um, again, again? If we you the comparison, I don't have um, specific data right now at my mind. But uh, we also uh, we had uh, made simulation, and, and the confirm what we confirmed is when we had uh, some specific case, for example, a biogas case when the amount of flu the amount of gas is not very big but now we also had some case study like for example flow gas from uh, shipping so in that case also the economically is also good and so the uh, other advantages as we said for example if uh, for shipping it's not possible you put the arm in tower because of the 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 waves and the shaking of this but memory is uh, more like a fixed and it's a closed loop so environmentally or engineering is some advantages. So uh, what I say for s small to medium size means not not power plant and big um, big case uh, separation of flow gas, but for some industry case like even cement industry could be possible, like steel making industry, some some this kind of scale, not for big uh, um, power plant case. That's for sure. 
Thank you very much. Um, another question uh, addressed to both uh, Liwan and Matteo. Uh, what about the possibility to apply these uh, separation technologies, membrane separation technologies, uh, to direct air capture? Um, actually, yeah, we have been thinking of that, but uh, the, um, we never had the opportunity to really test it. The advantage of that, for example, we have hollow fiber memory and compared with what they use solvents and the, the could be possible to make more accessible for the for the specific area inside the post. So we can if we can combine the, the solvents with memory, like for example, hollow fiber memory, we can make it in this shape. So it could be possible, but we never had the capacity to test it. Let, let, let me add just, just one comment related to the, the record capture, that it's probably one of the most challenging uh, applications for membrane because, the, because of the extreme dilution of the, of the source and membranes are not best suited to, you know, to, they are, I would say they are great if, if you want to uh, to remove large quantities of CO2, they are economically feasible and very uh, optimal, as also uh, Lily showed in, in one of the slides. Um, but in order to remove a few ppm, that is not probably not the best uh, choice if you want to make a design of, of the of the separation. Uh, still, there are many. Applic emerging new applications of membrane, new development, that they are making this process probably not ready for tomorrow, uh, but let's see the day after that, what, what we can get. Yeah, the mechanism is a little bit similar to facility transport. They also use some amino groups in their solvents, I see. So it um, could be we, if we can fix the solvents to like our memory, uh, like a, uh, make it into the shape of hollow fiber, this could be their opportunity as well. Because the solvents right now, they, they need to uh, have an optimum design to make more accessible for, for the air. So I think maybe they can learn from the hollow fiber <laughs> design. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I don't think there are other uh, specific uh, questions. So let me thanks again, uh, Matteo and Liwan. And thank you. Uh, I'd like to, to thank all the, uh, the attendees today. Uh, the, the presentation, this, this webinar, the, the, the recording of this webinar will be published soon in the uh, YouTube uh, channel of uh, of uh, Excel. So if someone is uh, interested in uh, see again the, the the presentations. So thank you very much indeed, and uh, see you uh, for the next uh, webinar of this uh, series. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye thank bye. You. And thanks to all. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.